So I just received my copy of Western Hero uh, for Hero Game System in the mail today, and I thought I would just do a little review on it. Um, so I'm not an employee of Hero Games, I'm just a fan. I've been playing, gosh, since uh, I think Champions 4th Edition. Um, and I'm a fan of old Western movies, so you know I thought I'd, uh, I'd pick it up. So it was 30 bucks. Um, got it from the, the Hero Games website store. Um, and for 30 bucks, I got a softcover book, a PDF version of it, and then Hero Designer Files. The softcover book showed up probably about three weeks after uh, I ordered it. It's about, you know, about 270 pages, um, and it's like an all-in-one book, which I'm really excited about because with some other systems, you know, you have to pick up three different books, you know, to, to play it, and you, you end up dropping like $150 into a game that you may or may not really like. Um, but for this, I mean, you've got you've got everything you need to play the game for for thirty bucks. It kind of reminds me back in the in the days of like a, the Palladium game systems, where you you drop some money and you get an all in one kind of book. So I, I really like that. Um, so another thing is like all the character creation information is like right there at the beginning. I I didn't really feel like I was cheated in any way. I didn't feel like they skimped out on uh, the character creation stuff. I mean, you have. Um, you know, all your character points that you need and the abilities review all your charts and, and such so it's like I, I really like that that it, you know everything's here i don't feel like i need to go out and buy you know another another you know supplement to to really get the most out of this product i think everything's uh, here and i like that a lot um so for some of you that feel that that the hero system is a little intimidating i know that there's a lot of people out there that say that when i if I mention Hero System, um, there's a lot of templates in here, which are great for character creation. So you're like, you know, do you want to be a gunfighter? They even have an option for a snake oil salesman, which is great. Um, they, every, the templates are there. So it's like you can just go go there. This is the kind of character I want. And you can use their suggestions. You can not use their suggestions. But everything's kind of like added up in a little template for you with some with prices there. Uh, another really cool thing is the gun charts. They're always... They're always really good with their weapon tables, um, and this is just no different. There's like three different pages of uh, manufacturer-specific weapon tables. So if you knew some guy in the Wild West that had a certain Smith & Wesson whatever pistol, they've got a table that's going to have it on there that's going to show you in the game system how much damage it's going to do, um, any kind of hit modifiers it's going to have. So it's, it's really great. I, I like these tables, and it's... it's Something I've always looked at, uh, forward to, to reading in these books. Um, another cool thing that I saw was, you know, it's a chapter on horses, which explain the different breeds and colorings and markings. Now, that's that's a big thing in the West about horses, you know, and oh, sometimes we think nowadays that a horse is a horse, but I mean, they, they, I actually learned something. I learned that the paint colorings, uh, with well, the difference between like a painted horse and a palomino, the, the different colorings, it like really explains it, explains the markings on there. You know, it's not. Not something that you would, you know, use every day in your game, but it's just really, it's really neat to know. It's like a, that added, that extra little, little spice that they added to the game to, to make it unique. It kind of shows the effort that they put into this. Um, if you want a gunfight, and everybody wants to have a showdown, right? Everybody wants to have, you know, the shootout at high noon. Um, they got a table for that, so it explains what you need to do for, for you know, your showdown, all the the advantages and disadvantages. Um, you know, before the bullets start flying, so you can actually, you know, kind of play out, you know, who's gonna who's gonna hit first, and that's another thing that that I was kind of wondering when I got this book, like, how are they gonna do that? But it's all explained there. Um, so, like again, if I were to run a game in this system, it'd be really helpful. It's like it's a good chart to to use. Um, so another interesting thing that they got is like available technology. It's like, well, I mean, what do they have available? Do they have a typewriter available this time? Do they have an aerosol can was something that they had on the list. So it's like it tells you when, you know, certain technologies were invented and available for people to use. So it's like, well, in this game, would they have this? Would they have that? So again, it's just like that extra little spice they put into this um, book that it makes things really cool. Um, just like for the weapons table, there's actually a horse breed table on there. So it's like you've got a if you've got a quarter horse, you know, you need to know how your your quarter horse is going to perform differently than you know another horse like a a draft horse or something, um, they've got it there on the table and you can look and you can see, you know, if you're, you're racing one type of horse, you know, against another, you know, how is it going to perform? Um, I kind of like that. Uh, and then as far as NPCs, there's like 13 pages of NPCs. 
there. So as a GM, you know that NPCs, these little NPCs that they already set up are great. And they, they not only help if you're trying to, to build a character of your own, you know, you got kind of ideas, um, but it, it saves you so much time. I mean, if you're like, hey, there's this guy, if, if the, the your player characters want to go do something and they're like, they, they go to this, a part of town that you didn't expect them to go to, which happens so many times, um, you can just go over to the the NPC samples and pull somebody that could probably fit into that situation. Um, again, it's, it's it's a huge time saver, and I'm all about saving time and having fun when playing some games. Um, another really cool thing is you know they got maps and and little uh, like house train cars are set up. They've got um, like like farmhouse you know drawings of like what where things would be in a farmhouse and like for a mansion. Um, I just, I like that a lot because I mean, you, you're like, well, you know, a farmhouse, what does a farmhouse look like? I really don't know what one would look like a mansion. What would it really look like? You know, where would they have dinner at? If I'm chasing somebody through here upstairs and what would it kind of look like? You know, you can kind of, you know, play it out in your mind, but it's really nice to have these drawings out there of uh, where things are. And uh, again, it's, it's a, it's a really helpful thing to have. And then it's like, wow, I, I hit the part of the book that's like Deadwood. So it's like the real Deadwood talks about, I think it's like 1890 Deadwood, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, but I, I think I peed myself a little bit when I saw this because it's just so cool. It just talks about the historical characters. It talks about there's a map of the area with, with all the buildings with little numbers on them. The numbers go towards a couple paragraphs of who owned the building, what kind of stuff ha was happening in the building. Um, just it just really brings the whole town to life. Um, I was I'm, like I said, I was really excited when I saw that. And then they have some other you know scenario ideas that will go along with Deadwood. And it's just it was great. I, I plan on on really reading that one and, and using some of those ideas uh, for my own uh, game that I want to run. Um, what am I gonna run in this? I think I'm probably gonna do something maybe maybe dogs in the vineyard type or Deadlands type, uh, just something a little a little bit different. Um, but kind of like my, my type of gameplay and this book is really works for that. Well, I mean, I could add a couple, a couple things from other hero games, um, books that are out there and just, just tool this campaign, uh, towards what, what I would like to do with it. Um, overall, I'd say I'm really happy with the product. Um, if there, if there is something that I can kind of like nitpick at, which I hate doing, um, it's the, the fonts on it seem kind of a little bit light. Um, when I'm reading it, and I'm not sure if that's just how the games are now, or if it's just with this one supplement. That the 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 print the the font it just seems like a little bit lighter than than the normal density. I'm not quite sure if that's true or not, but it, that's the way it looks to my eyes. Um, also, the the front and back cover it looks like some of the the fonts on it and some of the the pictures for the the logos of other companies seem to be a bit low res and, and again it's not a big deal you know it, it doesn't really affect the product but it's like just looking at it as we were sitting on a shelf it just kind of you can see kind of the the graininess of the the font but i mean that doesn't affect the game the game material really whatsoever just my little pickiness i guess um so if i were to give it a rating i'd give this like a 7.5 out of 10. I'm, I'm again i'm really happy for this and i plan on just kind of putting down a couple ideas and getting some friends together and playing. So uh, I hope you liked uh, listening to this review and maybe uh, I'll do a few more if you guys like it.